Hi, and welcome back. I'm going to try to answer the question, why does EQ cause face shift, by demonstrating that in fact it's the wrong question and get it all backwards. Here's reactor running an all-pass filter. Yes, I know, my reactor is out of date, but I get so little time to build in it these days that upgrading would feel like a waste of money. If anyone from Native Instruments is watching, feel free to consider that a hint. Anyway, an all-pass filter just shifts the phase without affecting frequency response at all. Here's the frequency response in Plugin Doctor. Totally flat. If I switch to show the phase, however, not flat anymore. The low frequencies start off in phase, then the phase shift increases as we pass the cutoff frequency, which I can adjust with this knob in reactor, and approaches 180 degrees of phase shift for the high frequencies. This is likely to be completely inaudible, however, so you might wonder, what's the point? I'll answer that by loading an addition module in reactor and adding the all-pass filtered signal to the original input signal. And let's check the frequency response back in Plugin Doctor. Well, would you look at that? We've created a low-pass filter. It's not tremendously steep, and we don't have any resonance, but I can change the cutoff with my reactor knob. OK, now what if instead of adding the dry and wet signals, I instead subtract the all-pass filtered signal from the original input signal? You can think of this as just inverting the polarity of the filtered signal, if you like. It's the same thing. And now we have a high-pass filter. I'm going to keep this addition module around, however, because next I'm going to add this high-pass filtered signal to the original input signal once again. Those of you who've seen my parallel filter videos won't be surprised to find that this creates a high shelf boost. We need to be able to vary the amount of boost, however, so let's load a multiply module, which I'll use to scale the level of the high-pass filter before adding it to the dry signal, and let's have another knob to control that. Hey presto, I can now change the amount of boost. And if I set the knob to go negative as well, I can also cut. We could do a bit of extra maths to give our gain knob a conventional decibel scale, but that's not important for this example. And of course, if I did this with the original uninverted low-pass filter, we would get a low shelf instead. If I switch to show phase again, it should no longer be surprising to see some phase shift creep in when I blend in some of our phase shifted signal with the gain knob. If anything, it's now surprising that we see so little. So what about the mid-range? I'm going to select that original all-pass filter module and duplicate it. Then wire it in series with the first. Now the high frequencies get shifted 180 degrees by the first filter, then another 180 degrees by the second to bring them full circle 360 degrees back in phase again. And would you look at that? We have a bell-shaped boost. Or a cut. And if we wanted, we could get bandpass or notch filters, just as we created low and high pass filters earlier. So in conclusion, if we can selectively shift the phase of certain frequencies with an all pass filter, it's then just a matter of simple arithmetic to derive all the standard EQ type filters from that. So in fact, EQ doesn't cause phase shift, phase shift causes EQ. Perhaps the correct question to ask is, how do all-pass filters selectively shift the phase of specific frequencies? Well, some voodoo maths magic, I guess. Dunno, I'll get back to you on that one. Thanks for watching.